All right, guys, welcome. I got a special guest. I'm excited to interview my buddy, Sean Hafner. He's got multiple FBBC locations. And so I just asked him to jump on here to share his experience with gym reinforcement so you guys can hear it from the horse's mouth. So, Sean, could you tell us where you're located, your gyms are located, and then what is the model that you do at your gyms as well? Yeah, we have three locations. We're in the Dayton, Ohio area. Um, they're all within 25, 30 minutes of each other. Fit Body Boot Camps are model more large group training. Uh, but we also have other things such as small group training that we've added on to it, nutrition coaching and more things like that. Awesome. All right. And then how long has your locations been open? Just so people get an idea how long you've been in the industry. Sure. Beaver Creek locations now six years. As of last month, our Kettering location hits five next month. And then uh, Huber Heights has been just over two years. Nice. And then what is your background, Sean? What got you into fitness? What made you decide to take the leap and become a gym owner? Yeah, yeah. I really have my own story. I mean, I used to be 120 pounds, 6'2", 120 pounds soaking wet. Uh, so it was really the other back. We help people lose weight. Uh, mine was kind of the other way around, helping uh, myself gain confidence, but gaining strength and so forth. So gotten in the fitness industry, um, was a district manager over some big box gyms. And then after about five or six years of doing that, I was like, I'm ready to do my own thing. And then that's when I got into uh, Fit Body Bootcamp. Okay. Awesome, man. And so we're, we're going to just take a look at one piece of the pipeline. There's a lot of aspects to business. So for you, gym reinforcements, we do your marketing, we run your ads, but let's go pre-GR. Like what were you doing? Did you have another agency? Were you running your own ads? Were you not running ads and just operating off organic? Like what did it look like? Yeah, we, we've tried it all. Yeah. I will say uh, we've done quite a few agencies before. I've uh, done my own ads myself for, for a couple of years. So we really tried it all. Uh, until we found the right thing. Okay. And then now we've been working together with you for a while. Um, and so any numbers or I guess any results that you can kind of call out, um, you know, any anything that you can say, like maybe even a campaign that went really well specifically. Um, yeah. What what can you share in terms of results? Yeah. yeah. Our six-week challenge that we just did, we got a ton of people in that six-week challenge, a ton of leads. Uh, so just having GR has been a game changer for us. First time saver, uh, by far, but uh, just the amount of leads we had on the six-week challenge that we're currently running uh, has been awesome. Nice. Yeah, it just makes your life a whole lot easier when you got a yeah. you know, steady flow of leads coming in. It's like one problem you don't have to worry about. There's plenty of others, I'm sure, that you can you know go and tackle. <laughs> yep, yep. All right, so what are your goals for this year, man? We're pretty early on in the year. I mean, I know you have multiple locations, so you probably can't dive into each one individually, but do you got like a big company goal that you're trying to hit this year uh, that you want to share with the audience? Yeah, we do. I mean, really our number one is kind of putting our entire company as a whole together, uh, really integrating with uh, the EOS model, but also really getting into more providing results for our clients. I mean, our ultimate goal is to uh, break a record that we've done in the last six years of transformations this year. So we're really focused on uh, providing those transformations, getting our client results, and really just developing our, our culture. Obviously, um, member count is the ultimate goal as well. But really, we know if we take care of our clients and provide those transformations, that's going to come along with it. Love it. And that's where I think, again, all gym owners can really always go back to that beginning stages because that's all you worried about when you were just like a trainer it was just like i want to get my people results i want to help them and then you get caught up in business and day-to-day -day and you kind of lose that and so yeah um i, I love that because even donald millard says the day that we stop obsessing about our client results is the day we should think of where we, the day we deserve to lose them and so you know if you're not obsessing on your client results somebody else will out obsess over that and they'll take your client so you should absolutely always be very customer centric. So uh, what I'd like to have you share, Sean, just because you've been in the business a while, I know you got some successful locations that are doing amazing numbers. What What's a golden nugget? What could you pass on to a fellow gym owner that's on the come up? They're in their grind mode. They're trying to get this thing to get moving. Is there any needle movers that you can share with them? I'd say there's a few, but the one main one that I would say that kind of took our business to the next level was not putting all our eggs in one basket. Um, obviously we're a large group training atmosphere, but, um, integrating small group training within our facilities of really taking our EFT to the next level and not really focused on how many clients can we continue to get, how much money per client can we get, mm -hmm. uh, and taking, taking care of our clients that way. 
by giving them more value. Um, so I would say that's probably the biggest uh, thing that is kind of taking us to the next level. All right. And that helps you get off the hamster wheel of having to get more people. You can keep your people and just get them to pay more. And it's just another way to skin the cat and grow your business and, and not have to be chasing numbers. And I bet it also increased lifetime value, right? Like now people are staying longer, I'm assuming. Well, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, before 2023, when we took that next level, was our average attrition rate was still decent. It was 5%. But at two out of three facilities, our average is about 2.75%. Wow. Um, and they're huge when it comes to small group training, those two facilities are. So I think that's a huge, uh, um, obviously, common denominator when it comes to that. Okay. And, you know, for the listeners, guys, like, you don't have to do small group. I love it. I know Sean does too. But there's many other ways to put a tier two. You can put in one-on-one -on -one personal training. You can put in nutrition coaching. You can put in online training. But just like what's your next level up beyond your, your baseline offering? Your customers probably are happy to pay you more, really, for more attention, like to have more focused attention from their coach or the owner, whoever you know it is. And so don't miss out on that opportunity. I see far too many gyms do that. And they just focus on their main offering. And, and that's okay but it can really become a grind if you don't have something else that just gives you another influx of cash and it isn't a whole lot of work. It doesn't cost you nothing. Like you're just advertising internally. There's no paid ads. There's no heavy, you know, marketing fee to do this. Right. Um, so, all right, that's great. Sean, uh, I guess the final thing around small group is when you guys are doing it, how many people do you consider small group? Do you do one on four, one on six, like just for people who are having those thoughts? Sure. We used to do one on six. Uh, we went down to one on four, actually. So even though we've maybe lost a couple people, we've dipped down to one on four because um, obviously pay, people are paying for a service. Their ultimate goal is to give them that one on one experience. And I feel like one on four seemed to work a lot better when it came to that personal experience. Uh, but anywhere between four to six clients uh, works very well. Uh, and I guess final question is when you launched it, it was a internal only play that you sold to your members or did you, did you do external also? Yeah. I mean, then that's the great thing. It's all been internal. So, I mean, external, we still have a lot that we can uh, go out to. We haven't even reached externally yet. So I think that's a good learning example is people want to pay more, the more value we give to them. And we already have the clients in the door. So how can we uh, just provide that more value because they're willing to pay it. Yeah. as long as I see it. And so I think there's definitely still more opportunity out there when we start doing externally. All right, man. Well, that's the call to action. Everybody watching this, take some time, build out your tier two, give more value. It's not about just charging them more money. It is because you're going to step up your game in terms of the service you provide and that you deserve to be compensated because you are going to give them more focus and attention. And that is a good thing. Um, clients will get better results. Clients will stay longer. And, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do a tier two. So you can, Reach out to me if you need help brainstorming. Sean, if they got questions for you, what would be the best way to get a hold of you? Yeah, they can send me an email. Uh, my email is sean.hafner uh, at fbbcohio.com. Okay, awesome, man. Well, thank you, Sean, for sharing your experience. And uh, I appreciate you, man. And I'm excited to see your business grow even more this year. So let's rock it. Awesome. Appreciate it, Dustin. Thanks, man. Yep.